How you doing, YouTube? Mountain Master Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review. A little bit of 750 Burn Barrel Age Hopeful Goodness in the form of the Elementary Brewings. I'm going to probably get a butcher this. It's called Laniakea Burn Barrel Age Imperial Stout. The Elementary. I've done a couple of their beers review-wise. I am a fan. Um, and I've been a fan of theirs for kind of a specific reason. Because a lot of the beers I've had from them have been kind of like, kind of nerdy beers. Like smaller, kind of textbook beers, a little bit of their own personal twist on them, but tinier beers, smaller beers. Beers that have been more kind of, you know, BJCP nerdy, kind of technical with their own twist on it. But um, I actually ended up visiting the brewery um, this past weekend. I was out that way, went to a couple of breweries, popped in there, and they had a couple bottles for sale they had um, a couple saison which i bought and they had this and i said well it's kind of like the flip the script thing usually a lot of breweries will have like these huge barrel aged pastry stouts or this that and the other thing dry hop that and then i'll be like i want to take your small beer to see what you do on the small scale thing it's kind of opposite with the elementary i want to see what they do on a big scale of things since i've had some of the smaller stuff a lot of more kind of shelfy kind of textbooky old schooler kind of beers so here we go. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm probably pushing it. Lanike, Lan, Lani Ikea? I don't know. I was girl. I was in love with a girl named Leilani in middle school before I knew what vaginas were, but I just knew I liked girls. So does that do anything for this? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it says here uh, in Hawaii, uh, Lani Ikea means endless heavens, and it is a name of a gigantic um, super cluster our little solar system lives in. Hmm. I did not know that. Darker than the deep reaches of space, our 2017 Bourbon Barrel Age Imperial Stout is a reminder that while the universe is vast, we still have a place entirely our own. Now, it is 9.5%, so a bit smaller for a Bourbon Barrel Age Stout. Nothing wrong with that. It's a 2017 bottle, so it's the beginning of April 2018. So we're at least looking at a couple months on this sucker. You know, minimum four, you know, probably more. So, yeah. Late-wise, it's awesome, you know. You know, electrons and stuff flying around a core of a name of a beer. All black label. You know, it says Burn Brother Late Stat on it. No more, no less. Give me a little Swiss Army knife out here so they can find a bottle opener. Hopefully it doesn't gush. No, not even close. Throw it into this rather bulbous Novari Res glass. From when I was up in Portland Way. And let's drink. Uh, what do we have? Uh, pinky finger. Creaminess. Milk chocolate. Like top to it. Super tight compact bubbles. And yeah, she's doc. She's got the darkness. She'll be messing up people's couches. You know what I mean? Look at that. She looks like a big imperial stout. Let's see what the nose has. That's the good stuff right there, brother. Oh, man, that's been a while. It's been a while since I've had that. Oh, man. That smells really, really, really fucking good. <sighs> soft milk chocolate. You're not even soft milk chocolate. You're getting, like, baker chocolate, milk chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, a uh, little bit of white chocolate. You're getting a whole bunch of chocolates in there. But it's coming in this nice, really kind of soft barrel char thing. I've talked about this ad nauseum with a lot of barrel-aged beers, but I haven't done a lot of barrel-aged beers, nor have I got it this way in a while. But it, I used to talk about this perfect barrel for me. My perfect barrel is, like, um, a nice bourbon barrel, and then you get that char, and it's almost like somebody rubbed that char with, like, a milk chocolate. And it's kind of a mash between that kind of barrel char and the chocolate, and that's what I'm getting in here. Yeah, there's vanilla in there. Big heaping amounts of vanilla in there. The bourbon doesn't really come off much like a little bit of bourbon. A little bit of pop of like a spirit in the nose. Not like necessarily like an alcohol burn, but you know there's a spirit involved. But I'm not really getting much as far as cherries or any of the typical kind of bourbon barrel aged notes you get. I'm just getting more of a vanilla, more barrel, but a gentle barrel. Nothing too crazy. And like the chocolateness is out of this world. <sighs> Soft, sweet, but the sweetness I level I want for something, especially this ABV, it smells nice. I gotta dive in. Cheers. Okay. 
flipping the script a ton in taste. Not necessarily in a bad thing. First thing that pops out, it's hot. He did not get any of that in the nose at all. It was more of a soft, kind of gentle sweetness, and that bourbon wasn't really there. You got a little bit of, like, kind of that prickly kind of, you know, alcohol heat in your nose, but nothing too crazy. It's pretty hot in the mouth. Now, it feels nice. Probably a little bit undercarbonated. But there's enough carbonation in there to kind of let you excuse it a little bit. Um, that chocolate definitely dips into the charry, um, toasted roasted malt kind of chocolatiness with baker's chocolate and then maybe maybe a dollop of semi-sweet chocolate. That kind of milk chocolate thing is kind of just evaporated completely. I think it's because how charry the barrel is. It's coming off charry, but not all that smoky. Charry combined with that, the way the kind of roasted malts kind of come off, so bittering. Um, I think a lot of that sweetness has just been bucked back in that kind of roasted malt. Kind of bittering is kind of coming to a head. It's still more sweet than bittering, but it's definitely more of a level playing field than you thought there would be in a nose. It's nice. Kind of a letdown based off the nose, though. The nose was absolutely 100% bonkers good. The taste is quite nice. Quite nice. It's just a combination of the way the heat comes off and comes off a little bit of kind of uh, fusel alcohol, evaporative, ethylene alcoholish kind of nondescript alcohol. Let's put it that way. If there was more of a kind of sweet bourbon character to it, I think I dig it, but it just comes off kind of boozy with not much else to that booziness. The lack of carbonation, and it's kind of flipped the script. It's just that the, the nose is so beautiful. And to go into this, if I didn't smell it all, I drink it, I'd be like, uh, I think I might come up a little bit higher as far as how I envision the beer. But you're set up so beautifully with that nose. I'm not saying it's a letdown in the taste, but I think there's just a bit of a disconnect between how awesome the nose is and how nice the taste is let's put it that way man that nose is good though <sighs> huff that shit all day mm. yeah that's pretty much it nose is bonkers good soft chocolate vanilla char all that stuff um and the taste it's definitely on a more binge bittering astringent kind of side with um a bit of booziness at the same time, I don't know where to land, where to really kind of place this beer as far as ageability. I'm not the biggest kind of like, okay, let's barrel age everything and let's also like cellar age everything. Is this beer like something that would benefit from a cellar? I don't know the answer to that question. Because it's so bitter, if that's going to drop off, I could see it. It'd be an interesting one to sell on. Let's put it this way. There's a lot of moving parts when it comes to beer. So it's not like I'm usually a long haul seller guy for a lot of barrel aged stuff. I'm more bottle conditioned um, sellerable guy. But um, yeah, I'd really be interested. I'm going to have to pick up another bottle of this, see how this ages. But that's the thing. I'm going to have to pick it up and let it sit for about five years. Because honestly, if I'm going to let this sit, if I own two of these, if Impulse didn't get my, in my way or I had a bunch of people over and I just wanted to open something and this kind of just flipped the bill. This is a five year for me. Just let it sit for five years. Let's see how she turns into something. But yeah, it's fun. It's a tasty beer. I dig it. Just man, it knows it's killer. So let's talk about it. Is this one of the better bourbon barrel eat stouts I've had so late? On the outside looking in. Uh, I mean, if you told me to bet cash money, gun to my head, is this going to be one of the better barrel eat stouts that I've ever had based off of just the nose before I tasted it? I would have bet a lot of money. Um, it's just, again, it's not that it's a big letdown in the mouth. And the taste, it, it, it's just, it's it, it, it was so amazing in the nose that it's just, it's a stark, stark difference. But it's still a fine beer. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, value and availability, I think I paid 20 bucks for a bottle. I mean, that's going rates for 750 barrel aged, 750 spinners, especially from smaller breweries. And leave you with, if you like what well, we like this. If you like the sweetness, but in the nose, but if you want that more kind of astringent, bitter kind of thing in, in, in the taste one, especially when it comes to your stouts, this is going to be for you. 
or if you like aging beer, because I think this would be a fun one to do essentially what I just did. Pick one up, pick two up, sorry. Pick two up, drink one now, save one for a couple years down the road, see how she changes. That's the fun part for me when it comes to a lot of beer, especially the ones that you want to age, see how they transform over time. So it'll be super interesting to see how this changes. There you go. Another review in the books. Uh, want to talk about it? Down there. Um, massive beers. Type that into Google. Find me doing social media stuff. Beer Massive. Type that into Google. Find me doing the podcasting stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice elementary beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>